Good morning. Hey, today I wanted to make take a moment and talk a little bit about our Wednesday nights. Uh, we've been studying Baptist history. Why the the kind of the title of the series is "Why Aren't You a Baptist?" or "Why We Are Baptists?" If you want to be nice, um, but we're Baptists. And this lesson today is not on being a Baptist, but I've got a a little color graph here. Graph a color. Uh, I don't know what you want to call it, a timeline of churches and religion. And um, there's, a, there's a lot that, that we need to understand about our background and about our heritage and where we came from. Um, the bottom here shows the development of religions and the split of Greek Orthodox and the, uh, the, um, tr- the more, um, I guess, more ritualistic uh, the Roman Catholic, and then the Greek Orthodox, which is the more more uh, ri- they all, all a lot of ritual, but the the Greek Orthodox churches are much more I don't know fancy, whatever you want to call it. But the break off of Methodist, Lutheran, Wesley, and different churches, and how they broke off over the years and where they came from, there's always been a group of people who had a different set of beliefs, and um, we use the the Baptist acrostic B Bible believing. A, the autonomy of the local church, that we believe the church is an independent organization. No one is over the church. Um, No uh, bishops and uh, cardinals and popes. The city is certainly not over it. Um, P, the BAP, the priesthood of the believer, that that, um, you have access to God. And this is especially back in these days, the, the people had been told for generations that the priest the one to get you to God. Well, you no, know, Jesus said you, he'll, he'll be the one. He, there's no, one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. And, uh, but this group of people, uh, there, were, there were Baptists all the way back to the first, second century. And um, by name, the name Baptist. I know people over the years have said that that didn't happen. But as I've researched, there, it, what, it did happen in the name Baptist. But there were other groups that believe the same things. Um, uh, baptism by immersion, that there's a pastor and deacon, the only two offices in the church. Uh, two ordinances, baptism and the Lord's Supper, not, um, uh, not sacraments. A sacrament, the definition of sacrament is meaning it has saving grace. It helps you get to heaven. They're just an ordinance. It's something that God wants done. But <clears throat> this, um, this is the kind of stuff we've been talking about the names of people, Monetists, Novatians, Donatists, Paletians, uh, Paternians, Albigenses, Walden, uh, Waldenses, Lollards. <clears throat> but there were always Baptists. And these other groups, they were very Baptistic. And, and we could have gone to their churches. Um, we today, um, many of the Baptist churches we can't go to. There are endless numbers of Baptist churches who aren't Baptist anymore. And so... Wednesday nights, uh, we, we've been studying this, and if you don't go to our church, there they should be online, all under one, on our YouTube channel anyway, uh, under one group or category that says Baptist to Heritage, and, and you can pick those up and, and w- look back at them. But anyway, um, I, I am uh, very thankful for, for who I am, where I am, where I came from, and uh, I was a part-time summer staff at a good Baptist church in Redding, California, Went from there while I was in college. Then I went from there to Indiana, worked into the ministry of Dr. Jack Hiles. Thankful for that place, thankful for that man, thankful for my teachers. Um, most of the people that taught me were veteran uh, people of the ministry. A lot of Bible colleges today, they're just filled with young men who grew up in the college and began and started teaching. And, I, and I'm not against that. Um, but there's nothing like hearing it from a guy who's done it. And my favorite classes in Bible college were always when they bring in a preacher and he talked about what he did because it was hands-on. It was the meat and potatoes and it wasn't philosophical. It was literal. And he told a story about a lady here and a deacon there and a Sunday school uh, teacher and a bus captain. And he told how they put together whatever constitutions and soul winning programs, big days. And and it wasn't just an idea. Uh, I made it happen. And I love where I came from. Today I wanted to talk about uh, about little things, and um, just take a moment or two. We are often uh, we hear something. You know, what's the big deal? That's just a little thing, and and um, you know whether it be 
uh, how you detail your car, how you clean your house, um, train your children. They might think, well, it's just a little thing. But little things make big things. Now, in cooking, little things matter. Um, you know, I've got, uh, I, do, I don't cook very much, but a little bit here and there. And uh, some, I've got some recipe cards that were my mom's that she gave to us. And, and um, you know, there'll be a small tea for a teaspoon and a big tea for a tablespoon. And if you don't look real careful, and my eyes aren't that good, if I don't, don't have my glasses on, I'm putting in a tablespoon of baking soda or baking powder instead of a teaspoon. And if you don't think two teaspoons of baking powder versus two tablespoons, if you don't think that'll change the recipe, little things matter. Uh, that little tea like that or like that, just that little thing, it'll ruin your whole recipe. And little things do matter. And um, they matter to God. And we're in a culture here that is erasing all the lines. You can't play sports without lines. You can't play, uh, you can't sew without, who knows how to sew anymore. Um, you always have lines and boundaries. Um, how big, how, uh, where the lines are drawn in a, a basketball court and how high a basketball hoop should be, all those things. We, we live right. The, the, this, uh, the detailed uh, things in an engine. Um, the voltage input and output and all these things, they matter so much. Little things do matter. And yet in religion and personal life and at home and marriage and children, we act like little things don't matter. Sure, they matter. They matter a lot. And just give me, let me give you some examples. Um, there's a, there was a recipe um, that was Moses was putting together the ark and worship and getting everything all set up. There's a recipe for oil they use for anointing oil. He put the recipe, wrote it down, and he said, don't ever vary for this recipe. And no one else can make this recipe. If anybody tries to fabricate it, they're to die. Well, that's pretty extreme for just copying your recipe that you have copyrighted or whatever. But little things matter to God. Remember, there was uh, they were moving the ark in the days of David. And the ark had been down in the Philistine area, and it was brought back and on a cart by the Philistines. These Philistines, they just put it in a cart and let the cows drag it up there. Well, David and his people put it on a cart and started taking it to Jerusalem. We know the Philistines didn't know a thing and they didn't carry it that way. They left it. They left it. They said, if this is of God, those cows will take it up back into Israel. They were neighbors. But David, um, he and the priest knew better. He had the priest. They're going to move it from this guy's house where it had been, and they were going to take it to Jerusalem. And along the way, the oxen stumbled a little bit. The guy put his hand up to steady the ark. No one was supposed to touch the ark. And he died just like that, dropped dead. Little things. Well, you know what? A little thing David didn't do the right way. And that man died because David was disobedient. That little disobedience, a cart versus the shoulders of the priest. That's how they're supposed to carry it. Four men, uh, the gold-plated wooden poles through the rings in the bottom of the ark and a priest front and back on both sides, four men were to carry that Ark of the Covenant on the shoulders of the preachers. Well, it was on a cart drawn by oxen, uh, one of the priests walking, and he died because he touched the Ark. Little things matter. You know, there were meats that shouldn't be eaten. Not long ago, someone gave us a gift card to, to um, Red Lobster, and um, I can just get their cheesy biscuits and some of those... Uh, coconut shrimp and that's enough of a meal for me um sometimes i feel guilty and think i should get some vegetables or whatever but who needs vegetables when you've got cheese biscuits and shrimp but um you know the the, you, the old testament jew couldn't eat shrimp that's a little thing but those dietary laws pork shrimp different things like that they're very detailed laid out if it doesn't clo the cloven hoof it couldn't have a a closed foot like a horse or a camel, had to have a cloven foot like a goat or a sheep. Um, uh, but it also had to chew its cud. A pig's got a cloven foot, but it doesn't chew its cud, so you couldn't eat pig. Can't uh, fish, it's got to have scales, so you can't eat catfish. All these little rules, what difference does it make? It, it, it made a big enough difference that God wrote it down in an eternal book. Little things do matter, and each one of those has got a reason why God does. Remember, at one point, Jesus says, I'm going into Jerusalem, and it's not going to be real pretty. And G Peter tried to stop him. He said, forbid it, Lord. And uh, the Lord said, get thee behind me, Satan. Well, that's pretty harsh, isn't it? Here, the guy's just 
sharing his feelings. Well, you know what? You try to keep someone from doing the will of God, you're satanic. And uh, Jesus had no problem pointing the finger. And, and uh, I don't know when, not long ago, I did one of these morning moments on being nice, how overrated nice is. And uh, it is overrated. Uh, you, we need to be right. Uh, I, I love what Dr. Howells used to say. I don't think I remember this when I was doing the, the video. But he said, I would rather do right wrongly than do wrong rightly. And, oh, that would define our politicians. We've got a lot of smooth-talking, warm, and nice politicians who do wrong all the time, but they're so nice about how they do it. And people vote for them because they smile. they got this big old smile. Now, give me a frowning, grumpy guy who does right. Now, if you can give me a nice guy who does right, that'd be great. But they're just not all that common. But little things, little things. Remember um, the... Um, the churches in Revelation. He said of the Laodicean church, I would you were hot or cold, but since you're lukewarm, I want to spew you out of my mouth. Those guys had gone away from the Lord and their church had drifted from God and they had religion and they had a congregation. They probably had a choir. They probably had a music and all. But, but he said, you make me sick. Your religion nauseates me. You go back to the Minor Prophets, he says in one of them, he said, I hate and I despise your feast days and your holy days. I hate them. Uh, you get your concordance, look up the word hate and despise. It'll show up, I'm going to say Obadiah somewhere in there in the Minor Prophets. Remember when Moses took the rock and God said they need water, hit the rock. And he hit the rock with the rod and water came out. Well, and sometime later, they needed water. And God said, speak to the rock. And Mo they'd made Moses mad. And he's a bunch of rebels. And so he said, must I bring water out of this rock? And he hit the rock with the rod and water came out. And God said, you're done. You can't go to the promised land. He'd put up with those people for all those years, 40 years. He'd put up with these backslidden, grumbling, complaining people. And uh, now one mistake, he doesn't get into the promised land. Little things matter. It does matter. You don't trust Christ. You trust your church, your baptism, your communion, your catechism, your beads, your candles. You trust any of those things, you're going to hell. Trust Jesus, you go to heaven. Uh, there's two religions. Jesus, that gets you to heaven. Everything else sends you to hell. Uh, little things. Um, just I, I saw a lady, a Middle Eastern lady it looked like, but must have been a Greek Orthodox as my guess. And oh, she was a rough looking older, older, older lady. And she had a uh, whatever you call head, head covering and and but she's she had her beads she's walking around Lowe's with her beads and I wanted to say you know those beads aren't going to get you to heaven lady you better get Jesus but it's none of my business so I didn't but um, just uh, you know what let me give you one, one more illustration when when they left Israel or Egypt the firstborn died and God said as they left he said I want your firstborn as my portion so he said, your firstborn children, they're mine. The firstborn son, that's going to be the priests and the Levites, and, and they're mine. Firstborn animals, I want them sacrificed to me. So the very the firstborn of each, of, of, of everything, um, the first of the fruits and all that stuff. Well, uh, came a situation, people were very backslidden, and, and Levi, uh, the family of Levi, the tribe of Levi, they stood up for God and took their stand for righteousness. And God said, you know what? Change my mind. I'm not going to take the firstborn. I'm going to take the tribe of Levi. And okay, good. That's who you want. You're God. You can have whatever you want. But then what happened, he counted and God said, there's not as many uh, Levites as there are firstborn, or maybe it's the other way around. Anyway, the count didn't match. And he said, I want an even deal. So you got to pay for this, the, the shortage, that was what it was, the shortage of firstborn. He said, I need X dollars per person to even this deal up uh, because I want what's mine. I'm giving you back the firstborn and you're giving me the Levites and what you're giving me is not as much as what I'm giving you so you pay to even this thing up. God's, God cares about little things and little things matter. A uh, little sand in your carburetor. I don't even know if we have carburetors anymore. Uh, little things matter. Uh, hey, the next time uh, you lean over to give your wife a kiss, just make a little mistake and kiss the gal on the other side of you sitting uh, in the restaurant and see if that little thing doesn't matter. Um, 
forget her birthday and mix it up another day. Uh, see if those, oh yeah, those things matter. Little things matter. And let's make sure our church is right, our family's right, and let's keep our country right. Because these little things are what are going to make the big difference.